Hello, fire signs. Welcome back. This is going to be your reading for the first two weeks of February. Uh, this is for your sun, moon, rising, and Venus. So if you have Aries, Leo, or Sag, anywhere in those placements in this reading could be for you. Uh, just never give your power away to a reading. Always remember that the information is dependent on all the choices that you make. Okay, so if you like different timelines, you want a new one, you just make the choices to jump into that. And uh, this is more of guidance, confirmations, all of that good stuff. Okay, so without further ado, Fire Signs, let's jump into your reading and find out what's in store for you. All right, Fire Signs. So as you can see, I've switched the screens. Um, I've tested it out in my alchemy group and I'm going to test it out with you guys uh, on this February reading. So I had someone uh, comment to me, write me in, said that the um, it was confusing to her to see my um, right hand in this screen, or sorry, my left hand in this screen, take the cards and then my right hand be putting them in this screen here. Uh, and it's just because of the way I had the camera set up and there was a mirroring and, and anyway, I was just trying to figure out how to make it look as visibly um, cohesive to you guys. So if you guys um, like it this way, let me know in the comments or if you prefer it the other way, let me know. I'm just going to take a consensus because it really doesn't matter to me. It just matters to me what you guys prefer more. Okay. So let's, um, go in to find out what's governing your reading right now. Like what, what energies are going to be more of the dominating, um, energy forces here for fire signs for the first two weeks of February. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> um, I did a timeless reading for my alchemy group um, this week, and one of these cards came up in it. So you guys have of uh, the void and you have a balance. So looks like the energies of the void are coming in, which is the stillness. It's where everything is non-polarized. Okay. It's a, it's where anything is possible. It's the beginning phase. Uh, as you see, it's the first card. So it's that new moon, um, energy. And, uh, in here they call it the dark moon. Um, when we go into the void, what's really interesting about the void too, is that it is so dark, but there's that the ability to see light becomes greater. And so I'm with this balance card coming up. Um, there's a need to, obviously there's some sort of something maybe out of balance for you, uh, fire signs needing to restore balance and maybe time to go within, uh, to see how you're perhaps, um, allowing sort of imbalance to happen in your reality, in your world, whether it's in, um, work or relationships or your health or anything like that. Um, okay, let's go into the fairy oracle and get some greater insight here. Like, what are some of the major lessons of this balance and void? Like, discovering balance, restoring it, making things. Okay, we have this card just flew out. We have the oak man, which is about, there's a lot of, um, Deep rooted wisdom that comes through um, the Oakman card. This one really wanted to fly out. Okay, and then lists of the shadows. Okay, so we have the Oakman and lists of the shadows. Let's go into the book here. Uh, let's go to the Oakman first. See if there's anything really specific here, but it's about ancient wisdom, strength, um, and, and a lot of depth. Okay. So of course, when you're going into the void, 
that the ability to get greater depth of understanding into what's going on for you right now is really, really important. Um, so this card depicts um, a lot of abil the ability to not act hastily, um, to really take the time to reflect on what's happening. So, uh, of course, you know, with, with, um, with a lot of knowledge doesn't necessarily mean comes a lot of wisdom. It's how you use that knowledge and activate it within your own life. So with this Oak Mountain coming up here is that you guys are going to be, um, really allowing that wisdom to activate within you as you go into the void to discover what it is here that's out of balance or what's pulling you in one direction where maybe you're needing to go in another one. Um, list of the shadows here is about healing. It's about healing the shadows, addictions, okay, um, bondage, self-esteem. It's kind of very similar to the devil card in a way, but more from the perspective of the healing aspect of all of that, you know, the, the parts of us that we, we don't want to see. Um, it's, it's about developing your own self-respect, your own self-esteem. So are you interesting? When I look at the balance card here and I look at lists of the shadows, it's telling me that some of you may be, um, working through issues revolving respect, self-respect, um, and, and self-worth, self-esteem issues. Um, really taking what you know, what you've learned over many, many years, but maybe haven't applied thoroughly into your life or Maybe it's just a particular situation in your a particular situation in your life that you've allowed something to slip to the wayside, and you're letting certain mm, you're letting some of your boundaries down that shouldn't be your guard down where it shouldn't be. In a sense of how you let people treat you, um, I don't know. That's really kind of coming through. Um, it's about taking practical steps and not focusing on all of the steps needed, but just initiating, you know, like taking those first wobbly steps towards a solution, towards something better for yourself, towards, um, towards healing. Okay. So that's, what's kind of going on here. So let's go into the tarot fire signs and find out what, deeper messages do we have here for um for fire signs Ooh, wow whoa this one really just flew right out okay so we have um the ace of cups so <clears throat> there's this initiation of a new love um i also am hearing new hope uh this Ace of Cups is bringing the energy of, um, I'm, I'm just hearing new love over and over again. New love. Okay. That's really beautiful. Um, let's see. Let's see how um, this all plays out. So beautiful. So something's coming in here that's new love. Why is there out of balance here? Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. And then we have the ace of swords in reverse. So two aces now starting your reading. One's in reverse. So ace of swords, ace of swords in reverse. Okay. So you know how I was talking about, um, the ace of swords, the sword's energy is very mental. Uh, it's it's also very protective. Every time, uh, you know, the sword is about, protect. to me, it's about protecting your self, protecting your boundaries, um, needing to cut things out that don't serve you. So there may be something here that 
with this new love wanting to come in, that there may be something either within you that needs to be released in order for this new love to be really embraced, this new energy, whatever it is. Um, it could be new love in the form of a partner. It could be new love in the form of um, a new endeavor that that you're quite passionate about. Uh, it could be just like a, some sort of new friendship. Um, but something here, this Ace of Swords. Hmm. Ace of Swords in reverse. There's something, a truth that's not being willing to look at. Something, a, a new truth that might be avoided right now. It's so interesting. This There's a lot of similar stuff coming through in this reading that came through in my Alchemy Timeless reading I did for them. Um, I mean, it's not, it's not fully. There's just a couple of similar messages. Like, with the void coming up, I was talking to them about how sometimes the void is all about understanding what you're avoiding. So what truth is being avoided or blocked, suppressed? Um, is there is there a boundary that perhaps gets crossed too many times and it's really time to make the choice this time to not let that happen again? Um, okay, and as I'm saying that, the Seven of Wands comes out. Yeah, yeah, I'm just really picking up on this idea of needing to really stand your ground. Um, but also, when I say stand your ground, it may not even be towards anyone outside of you. It could be. There could be patterns in your life where you've allowed people to take advantage of you or things like that. But the seven of wands is all about really kind of, uh, it's about taking this ace of swords, okay, and wielding your truth and not feeling apologetic for it. Like not needing to apologize for who you are, for what you believe in or all of that. I, I Like just not letting people railroad you. I don't know why these messages are really coming. It's just, that's what I'm picking up on. So, um, so perhaps bringing balance of understanding the importance of, of your own boundaries of knowing how important it is to, as you are, you know, this message came out, I did, um, a podcast. Um, I was a guest on a podcast last week and this whole, um, conversation came up about how it's one of the misinterpretations of being one means that we are all fluid and there's no boundaries anymore. And that's not true. And I described it on there. Um, I described it on there as like, you know, when I studied red blood cells under a microscope, uh, through some of my studying to understand how our health is affected on a cellular level through analyzing blood cells. When the cell wall, every cell has a cell wall. And in order for, when, as soon as the cell wall loses its integrity, that's how I know the cell is under stress and it's starting to die. And it needs to maintain its cell wall integrity in order for the toxins that are stuck in the cell to get out and for nutrients to get in. And we have to remember that although we're part of this collective um, multiverse and that we're all part of one source, that we still have our own individuality. And there are certain things in order for us to function, we need to protect ourselves and take care of our own individual body, energy field, all of that. And so maintaining boundaries is not about disconnecting yourself from anything, but allowing yourself to be even more connected while protecting your own integrity. Okay. So that's one of the messages there. Okay. So then we have this King of Cups coming up in reverse. So this is talking about, um, not being able to express your feelings. You may be dealing with someone who is not able to express their emotions properly, or maybe they're acting a little bit immature. Um, 
around you. This may have happened in the past because I don't feel like this King of Cups is actually attached to this Ace of Cups over here. I feel like these are two separate things. Um, that this is drawing attention to something in the past or an old pattern that needs to be broken. But I'm getting the sense here that there was someone who um, may have been in um, an authority of some sort, okay, because it is a king, uh, may have more masculine energy, doesn't need to be a man, but may have more masculine energy, but is not really expressing their truth through emotion, and I say that because of this Ace of Swords coming up. It's really, I'm feeling, um, yeah, someone wasn't expressing the truth and just not taking, a, like kings take accountability for themselves and um, take accountability for their own feelings, their own emotions. And perhaps this person wasn't doing that, um, not being as mature as possible. And then we just have this card coming out. So we have the hanging man. Okay. So again, this is beautiful. This is, this is exactly why the void is here. Okay. This is exactly why the void has shown up is so that you can take pause. You can take time to reflect on what needs to shift here. What in your reality are you like? I just don't want this anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. Like I deserve more. I deserve better. And I, and the first person who's going to give me better is me. How do I, how do I do this? How do I shift the energy? What deep wisdom do I tap into right now that there's a lot of knowledge I've learned over the years, but how do I activate that into something I can live right now? Okay. That's where the hangman is coming in here. So there's a need to pause at this time, fire sign, to get a different perspective, to, to reflect on what's out of balance and how to restore that because there is something really new and beautiful coming in here. And you want to make sure you're in the right position to receive whatever it is, um, that you're not holding on to old energies or patterns that are going to either... Um, create a situation where you miss this opportunity or you're not really just able to receive it. And then we have the six of cups coming up here in reverse. The six of cups in reverse. So I'm going to say this is such a, um, you know, this, this is, this could mean that there is a soulmate or um, divine partnership trying to come in, but um, it's blocked. Or this could have been, this could be referring to this King of Cups of, if that was like a relationship that maybe it was um, more of a, um, maybe more of a karmic relationship than an actual soul relationship because it is in reverse. However, I also feel like this is such, um, this is one of the big children cards. Okay. And you guys know how I am about the inner child. And, you know, with this list of the shadows coming up and talking about the need for healing, um, and you finding that deep wisdom through the void, what, what happens in your childhood that your inner child wants to share with you that is that he or she may be so scared about taking a risk on love and and when I say love that could be even with things that it could not just necessarily be a relationship it could be anything that's that you're scared to lose okay so um Maybe it's just really good things happening. Like you're afraid to let them in because if you lose them, then it's even, the pain is even worse. Um, and so this six of cups in reverse is kind of, I'm feeling that there's, as you go into the void and you're looking for balance, some clues will be found through your inner child to ask him or her, you know, ask them like, what, what are you what are you scared of? What are you um, frightened or timid or um, scared to take a risk on? Okay. Like that's what I'm kind of feeling like they're scared to take a risk on because you have some new beginnings trying to come in. One's in reverse. There's this need to take a pause. Um, yeah. 
so I think that might be helpful for you guys in understanding that. Um, there's like a big glare on cards. Let me see. Let me see if I can just fix that one second. Okay, that didn't really help much. Okay, sorry about the um, sorry about the glare. Okay, so let's see what other messages do we have here for. Fire signs. What other messages do we have here for fire signs? Okay, pause. Pause. Um, they want me to change the question. Okay, what will be most helpful right now to fire signs in understanding how to move forward through this? What is most helpful to um, fire signs in understanding how they will move through this? Okay, we have the Knight, Ten of Wands. Whoa! And we have the Tower. Oh my goodness. Okay. So, um, Ten of Wands, Tower. <sighs> Something has been absolutely backbreaking burden. Really painful carried it for a very long time. This is something you've been carrying for a very long time. And um, the tower card is, with, with the question that I asked, I'm not so much getting that this is going to be an outside influence coming in for you, fire signs, but more so an inside influence of a tower. So kind of like a, um, an awakening, um, a realization uh, around this burden. So when you go into the void, um, really allow yourself to be open to discovering the truth um, opening your eyes wide open to this burden you've been carrying and how you let that go. Because it's a 10. It means it's time to release it. So something here needs to be released, obviously, especially if you're having a new, a new energy of love trying to come in here for you. Okay, what is... Um, What's the final message here for fire signs? What's the final message here for fire signs that is going to serve them to their highest light and highest good? What is the final message here for fire signs that will serve them to their highest? Whoa, okay, one second, that's a lot of cards. What do they need to know here? What is going to be most helpful to them to know at this time as we close out the reading? Ooh, okay. We have the two of wands in reverse. Hmm. You're faced with a choice at this time, fire signs, a choice that can really shift your path at this time, like really shift the direction and where you go. Um, something big's coming in. Some opportunity here, an opportunity that's within, an opportunity you find in, find in the void, but also you find in your external environment that kind of initiates this. There's some sort, something outside of you that's initiating you to go within so that you can make a decision that will have, um, will shift things, will change things, will have a more profound effect on how your life unfolds. Uh, can we get another card on that two of wands? Can we get another? Wow. Yeah, it's transforming. It's literally transforming. Something is, it's time to let something go in order for this new 
new, beautiful love energy to come in. And it's going to be a transformation within you that's allowing, there's a major transformation happening here. That's why I don't feel like this tower is um, external. I really feel like it's an internal awakening within you, something kind of sparking to life, realizations that allow you to, to move beyond old patterns. And um, this death card is very indicative of the Saturn-Pluto conjunction we've just gone through uh, back on, on, in, on January 12th. And this could just be like, the remnants of that, because that energy is so powerful. And even though, you know, they're not conjunct at this time, the energy is still there. It's still lingering. And so there's something here for you, fire signs. It's really, you can't take it in with you anymore on your life. Like it really, it's the baggage that needs to be let go. Whatever this 10 of wands is, it needs to be let go so that you can finally allow what you deserve, what you, you know you deserve deep down, or perhaps you need to discover how much you deserve. Uh, when we talk about that self-esteem, self-worth issue coming up, knowing how big your cup actually is, knowing what can be filled up for you. Okay, so that's my um, reading for you, uh, Fire Signs, for the first two weeks of Feb. I hope it was helpful. If you need your own reading, all that information is in the description below. I'd love to work with you. Fire Signs, I love you so much. Have a wonderful, wonderful month of Feb.